So uh, my daughter joined HMS Rally, um, or the Navy, um, last September. Uh, she was 17 years old, um, 17 and a half, so it was after her GCSEs, she did her GCSEs. Um, and she did actually okay on GCSEs, but um, didn't like really doing exams. So um, we looked into doing an apprenticeship with the Royal Navy. Um, so she went through the usual application process. It took about a year from, I'd say, when she first put her application in to when she actually joined, uh, in fact, it was slightly under a year before she actually joined HMS Rally. Um, and she went through the usual stages that people talk about, interview, um, medicals, fitness test, uh, PRNC, which she really enjoyed actually, over at Collinwood. Um, so she put her application in just a week before Christmas and then she joined um, and started at HMS Rally, I think it was around the 4th of September. So I suppose about nine months or an all from start to finish. It's not bad at all. Um, she um, went through the security check really quickly as well. I think it only took a few weeks, so it was, was actually quite quick. Um, she's, she was applying for the submarine service, so um, tactical warfare specialist is what she's doing now. Um, so she joined, I dropped her off at um, Plymouth Station. So what you do is you drop them off at the station unless they come by train. I'd spent the weekend there with her before I, I, I dropped her off. Um, waved to her and there you go, and off she went really. And they, they met her at the station, took her over to HMS Rally, across on the ferry by coach. And then she joined with the rest of them. She was put in Nelson, so they were all put in different groups. So she was in the Nelson group. Um, um, and actually, yeah, she found it tough. She found it really tough. Um, so people talk about what you can do, how you can prepare. She wasn't the youngest. There was someone younger than her. There was a, there was a 16 year old who was still 16, who was um, at rally with her. Um, and there were some younger lads as well. There were more lads than there were girls. I would say about 10% in her, uh, the people that passed out may have been girls, maybe 20%, but it, it was more boys than girls. Um, different ages, uh, like I said, I think the youngest was 16, the oldest was well into their 30s. Um, mixture, uh, UK nationals, um, Caribbean, South African, so a lot of the Commonwealth countries as well. Um, but um, yeah, it was it was tough. So when they get there, they sign up, they do all the paperwork, and that's the easy bit, I think. To be fair, um, so you've got the ten weeks. I think the hardest part of it um, was um, just just the resilience you needed, the stamina you need to get through their days. Because they wake up, you know, you wake up at half five in the morning, you go to bed at like ten, ten thirty ish, and you don't sit still, you don't sit down. In fact, in the first four weeks. They weren't allowed to sit down. If they were caught sitting down anywhere, I think they got press ups or they got star jumps or they got over whatever was on this um, wheel of, um, I can't remember what it was called, but it wasn't a wheel of fortune, that was for sure. It was certainly a, a wheel of punish, fitness punishment or they'd do a run. Um, but you, they march everywhere. You don't walk anywhere, you march everywhere. Um, so you don't sit still. Um, I think if I remember, she'd tell me that she'd actually go to the toilet so she could actually sit down and have a break. So that's the kind of level it's at. Um, she found the fitness okay, actually. Um, um, she she was fairly fit before, quite like running. She did her fitness test um, in under, I think, under 12 minutes. I mean, she definitely improved it where she was there. Um, but it was more the relentless of, of everything. So it's activity after activity, and then you're ironing, and then you're cleaning, and then you're doing you know, your kit muster. It's just, it is relentless. And in the first four weeks, it, I think it's really tough, but I think it's just the shock of going from what we consider maybe normal life, um, especially of a teenager, to um, what they go through when they get there. Not necessarily a bad thing, but certainly it was, it was, it was full on. Um, I mean, in the first four weeks, I think one thing she missed was tea, making a cup of tea, because they're not allowed to make cups of tea in the first four weeks. You can get tea when they go to breakfast. Um, I think actually it might have been coffee only, but... Um, but you can't make your own cup of tea. Um, that's that's kind of, it's a reward after, it was after about four weeks, the reward was they could access the kettle. So it is very much um, behavior management on a kind of um, quite, I'd say quite, well, not basic, but quite a raw um, 
for those of you who know about Pavlo's dog, it's very much behavioural management in that way. That you know, if you 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 do well, you get rewarded. So you get access to a kettle, you're allowed a tea bag. Um, eventually, they're allowed access to the TV room. And if um, anyone does anything wrong, then you're punished. Um, I remember her phoning me after I think it was five weeks crying because um, they were all dragged out of their um, dorms. I can't remember what they're called at like 11 o'clock at night because the boys had been caught having a flip-flop fight. And so they all got dragged out onto the parade square in the pouring rain and just told to stand there. So if you're in that so at that division, so that Nelson division, if anyone does something wrong, it could be that you're all punished and that's just the way it's done. And um, I think she found that quite unfair at time. Maybe it's a, a good lesson, but uh, I think, yeah, I think the girls got very annoyed with the boys because they did get up to mischief. Um, um, quite a lot, actually, I think. And then the, the girls were all equally punished. Um, but by the end of it, actually, um, I think she, she would look back now and say that um, it wasn't so bad, but she wouldn't want to do it again. I think, I think she wouldn't want to do it again because it is relentless. Uh, around four weeks, you can actually leave. You can request to leave after four weeks. And the reason they do that is the first four weeks is the worst. And then it actually it start, you get paid, so that helps after four weeks. And actually, it, it just does start to improve. So um, you start doing like seamanship stuff. Um, they did, they had a, she had a really good week where they were doing canoeing. It was like Duke of Edinburgh stuff. But also there was Kitmaster and there was military fitness as well, basic fitness stuff going on. Um, but actually it was a much better week. So around week five, there was a definite change, I would say. Um, and then I think Pierce Sellers was week four, which is where they go and do outside activities. <clears throat> and they do, I think it was rafting across this waterway. Didn't enjoy that at all. It was, it was manic, it was cold, <clears throat> wet. And if I remember, they get back from it and then they have... 24 hours before the next kit master and that none of their clothes dry in time so they practically all failed it so it's kind of set up to fail them um so yeah i mean they, they always say about they break you and then you re they rebuild you and i actually i think that's actually a fair point that that is kind of what happens um people talk about how you prepare fitness yes because if you can run um and you've got that strength then it's one less thing to worry about i think um my daughter couldn't really iron. She tried ironing before she went, but it wasn't great. And I don't think you really, yes, you could practice ironing before, but I, I, I suspect that actually until you get there, then you, you, cause you're doing it all the time. I'm not, I'm not sure if it makes much difference. Um, the kit masters are hard. They are really, really tough. My daughter failed one. It was a bit of fluff, I think, on one of her Velcro um, patches. Um, and she failed the kit master. I think she failed another one actually, cause there was a, Bit of thread on another something or other um, but fortunately past the the last formal one um, a lot of people a lot of people were um, what it's called back to week or two weeks you know people do get injured uh, people do fail things um, so for example if you do keep failing the kit muster you, they put you back and then you you have to practice it for a week and then they put you back in with the next group that's a week behind next division um, yeah, I think what other things she she enjoyed. Um, she didn't actually get to go away. There was a bit where you go away for a weekend, and you, you go to this lovely country club. Um, but she didn't. I can't think what it was called. But she didn't get to go go on that because the boys had done something naughty, so they didn't get to go. Um, and but she didn't mind because it meant she got to spend the weekend doing nothing, which is um, what she quite enjoyed at that point. Because she said that you don't have time to do anything. So just. Um, spending a bit of time just hanging around actually is it's or spinning dits as they say is quite nice um, she um, really enjoyed chapel not because she's religious but she, apparently it's the only time you can sit down and sing and actually if you sing and they give you biscuits and tea after chapel um, and the bish as she calls the chaplain um, is really nice and if you've got any problems you can go talk to the bish and he, he's, he's really nice and supportive the people that the chiefs that were in charge of her division were lovely I have to say at Nelson um, they were tough, they were, but I think if, if uh, you were making an effort, doing all you could do, to be fair, um, then actually if, if something happened, they were, they were really good and supportive. So I, I will give you that. I think you, you need to show you're making an effort, really make an effort, 100%. Even if that's not that 100%, you're not as good as someone else, it doesn't matter. You've got to make that 100%. 
Um, she didn't like military fitness, although she's quite fit, but they are really strict um, and relentless. Um, and they used to have a countdown for their military fitness. And when they got to the end of it, she was quite happy um, that that was the last one, I have to say. But you don't do your last one, I think, till week 10. And um, I mean, people might think you get to week eight, wait, week eight and you're safe. You're not. Um, you can fail on week 10. You can fail on week 10 and they can put you back in week 10 and they can chuck you out on week 10. Um, I think if I remember, there were a couple of guys, boys that did something or I think they tried to get off of base when they weren't supposed to. Maybe that was week eight and actually they were discharged. So you can get discharged quite late into the train if you do um, something wrong. Um, I would say you play the game. Um, rally is just rally. When you leave rally, it's not the same. Thank God most people will say it isn't the same. So once uh, my daughter had got through rally, um, she, she loves it. She absolutely loves it. So she um, carried on with the submarine training at rally and then went up to um, uh, Faz Lane up in, um, on the Clyde and, and loves it. it. And it's it's she said she couldn't think about doing anything different. But rally is almost like a separate thing. It's part of the Navy. You have to go through it. Everyone has to go through it. But it is just something you do. You do it and you get through it. And I think your, the mentality is, is 10 weeks. That's all it is. Just get through those 10 weeks. Um, that's all you have to do. Um, mobile phones. Yes, actually, you're allowed your mobile phone sometimes. Um, good or bad? I, I don't know. I'd, I'd argue it each way. Uh, I would say typically on a Wednesday night, my daughter would phone me really hacked off um, or upset, exhausted, um, by the weekend it was a lot better and that was standard through the whole 10 weeks wednesday was always a bad day i think a bad evening um in fact it was quite interesting because by the end of the 10 weeks i said just don't don't call me on a wednesday i'll just not call each other but she said it helped her i didn't know if it made it worse but she did actually say it really helped her to be able to offload and and sometimes i thought you know she's gonna leave because you can't stop them from leaving but she never did actually she kept going so a lot of those phone conversations were keep going, you've got this far. And I think that's what you have to keep reminding yourself. You've got that far. You've only got that many weeks to go. Um, and I can tell you now, if you make it through the four, first four weeks, you can make it through the rest, I would say. Um, it helps when you start getting paid as well. I think that helps enormously. And if you, if you really are struggling, I would say, yeah, you talk to your parents because you will, but also you talk to the other cadets who will help you get, get, it, get you through it. Um, but the bish, uh, the bishop, the chaplain, you can go and talk to, and um, they're really nice. There's a few of them there. They were really nice and supportive. Amelia, my daughter, talked to them um, once, and um, they were really nice. And a lot of them do just to chat to them. Um, so I would say, on the whole, resilience, stamina are the, are the big things. You may not be the fittest person. I mean, obviously, you must be fit enough to get into the Navy. You'll get fitter as the 10 weeks go on. Um, uh, but it is... It is just, it's, it's relentless. Um, so I suppose I'd say, how would you train? Well, I think if you go stand, stand up all day, I think if you work in McDonald's, you're probably good enough than anyone because you stand up working all day from early to late. I think that probably does help. Um, I think if you have a desk job, you, you know, you need to think about how you can build that stamina up because it is relentless, relentless. Um, but yeah, but as I say, I think if you get through those 10 weeks, it, it does all change for the better. I really do think so. Um, and I'd say good luck. Um, yeah.